If you want the gills, we got the skills right here at 302 Fishing. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel here. If you're brand new, you're still hanging around and you haven't already done so, smash that subscribe button, click that notification bell. That way you're informed of all of our future episodes. Give us a big fat thumbs up if you like any of our videos. Help us out on the algorithm. And of course, drop a comment below. Let's get into this. What a week's worth of time does for a state. Here in Delaware, last week it was 40 degrees, 20 mile an hour winds, and I was freezing my rear end off. And you saw me with that episode where I was casting that black blue jig out there by Boya, and we only caught that one fish. But boy, was it nice, man. That big fat green bee bag we pulled off there. <laughs> Fast forward a week, 60s, 70s, and dare I say yes, yesterday, an 82 degree day, plus two more 72 degree days coming this weekend right here. Plenty of time for this water to warm up right here. I was racking my mind as to which way I want to go. Do I want to burn the pond up or do I want to go ahead and take it nice and slow? So we decided to come to the kidney bean pond and my thought is we're going to go slow. But we got a problem, guys. I don't know if you notice or not. Very, very chocolatey out here right now. And uh, that's going to change up the color that I need to use uh, on this particular body of water. We're not going to start down here like we normally do. We're going to go over here on the back end, guys, uh, where I think the fish will be at, because I think that's where the beds are at. But we are going to come out, guys, with a five-inch lunker log. We've never used this Guggenbait plastic ever on this channel, so I want to try it out. I'm sure it'll do good. We're going to wacky rig it, guys. We've got the black-blue flake. That's what we're going to start off with first, the dark color bait. And, of course, if that doesn't work out, we'll come more natural and come back out here with the watermelon red flake uh, lunker log. So give me a couple seconds. We're going to tie these baits on the end of the line. We're going to start tossing around here, guys, and hopefully, if we're lucky, we get a big, fat green bean bag on the end of that line. So we made the long walk from my vehicle all the way over to here to the back side of the pond. We're going to try to see how our lunker log does fishing wise on this end here. I think we're going to have the better luck, as I mentioned earlier, on this end as opposed to the other end. Because most of the times the wind blows in this direction where all the bait fish are at. Every once in a while it does blow down the other end. So just got to pay attention to that uh, and see if the wind shifts or not uh, during the day here. My first approach right here is I'm going to come right to the middle of the pond and I'm going to cast out deep and see if the fish are still out there or if again as we bring it in to see if they bite towards the edge of the pond right here if they're starting to bite towards the edge then we'll start working around the perimeter of the pond right here rather than trying to bomb all day long got to do the uh, opening of the bag sniffing of the bait and all we got to do is catch some fish <laughs> As always, it's pretty simple to go ahead and create a wacky rig. All you gotta do is go out and get yourself a wacky rig tool. Many makers make this particular tool. This one's Field and Stream. I think it's like five, six bucks. Gives you a few rubber bands on here. Take your bait, come about halfway, and you're gonna bring one up. And as I'm bringing it up, we're gonna go ahead and angle the worm a little bit because we want this in a crisscross when these two bands are on the worm. So there's one, and then we're going to grab the next band here, and angle the bait the other way, same thing, right in the same position where we put the other band, and boom, there's the second band, and there's the X that we're looking for right there. We got, I think, a one alt wacky rig hook on here. I, go, I always go with Gamagatsu, guys. We got the red hook on here. I always believe the red draws them in. It's always up for a fierce debate, but it's whatever your personal preference is. But we'll get the, the hook right in there and through the crossed area. And there you go. We're gonna keep showing you, again, the novices, the pros obviously know what to do, but people who wanna learn how to whack your rig, man, I'm gonna keep reminding and showing people how to, to Bait these rigs up here and everything else so that way you guys can be productive and successful in catching fish. But we're just going to, like I said, bomb right out in the middle here and see how long it takes. I'm literally looking right down here. I'm seeing little minnows skittering around. So this might turn out to be something pretty good. Let me see uh, how we look here. Perfect. Look at that. That's all we're doing is that little jig, guys. That'll get them fish on there every day, no matter what time of the year it is. 
Well, let's get the big old bomb out there. I've never been able to find out where these fish bed at because we never see anything here or along this edge right here. Obviously, we can't see what's along where these homes are at because it's people's property, but I would be remiss not to think that it would not be on that side. We have algae that we have to contend with along the way here. We do have an open hook, unfortunately. We don't have any weedless wacky rig hooks on uh, the end of the line here, so we'll make do with what we have. One or two things are either going to happen. You're going to see the line pull away, or you're going to see the line move left or right. Give it a couple seconds. Usually, generally, maybe one second. You don't want to go any longer than that because you don't want that bait getting down in the gullet of the fish. And just go for the strike, left or right, whichever hand you are. And keep that pressure on that fish. One thing I am not noticing on this pond right yet is turtles. No turtle heads. Got our nice little turtle visible here. I just got done mentioning, I don't see any turtles, but I guess they come out here on cue when you mention their names. <laughs> All right, fishy fish, let's go. Don't make me wait long. All right, I'm gonna put my hand out in the water here and see what we got going on. Temperature wise, very, very nice. It's gotta be at least 50, if not a couple degrees above. I'm gonna try to come across the front of these algae blooms that are right in front of us. On this particular pond right here, you see the algae bloom, you would think the water and the ground stop right here, but in actuality, where these reeds and everything are at, there's actually just a little indentation that's underneath, and these bass like to hang right up in there, and sometimes you'll get a big one that just bolts right out from underneath there. Boy, so far nothing's touching that bait at all. All right, let's walk over to that corner here to my left. Walk right over here, and cast over into that little, little tiny cove that's over here. Oh, it's frog jumping out over there. At least we know there's something living in here. <laughs> Something on the end of the line right there. Ah, I think that was a fish I just lost. It felt like something was on there. That or something's on the end of it that uh, shouldn't be on the end, like a piece of reed. Now that's a, looks like it's a fish, it's moving. Fish on. Oh. <laughs> It had me fooled. It was not moving like it was a fish on the end of the line. But then it finally decided to move right. <laughs> so we're gonna throw a couple more casts right along the shoreline here. We're gonna make our way down towards the middle of the pond. Uh, we'll cast along this shoreline going this way, cast along to the shoreline across from us as we get down there. But uh, quite surprised that we don't have anything on the end of the line as of yet on the simplest of all baits. All right, so one thing I'm noticing right now is uh, obviously one, we're not catching fish, but two, I forgot my knife. So that means we got to go back to the car over here and pick it up, <laughs> which means we'll start on the other end of the pond rather than going to the middle where I just mentioned to you at, I can see fish already busting up right there. I saw something coming all the way across here and I was wondering, see that? See that? They're busting up in the middle there, guys. Let's make our way over there. I think we're gonna have our first possible chance of getting something on. They're probably chasing the bait fish because a lot of minnow do sit right on that bend. Again, paying attention to your surroundings. All right, we're gonna ease our way in here. We're gonna cast off to our left-hand side where I saw the blow-ups at. As I mentioned, I always bring it back up. So look, look at that, see that guys? I always bring it back up. So I have a Guggen Baits thick flipping jig. It's a little bit more compact and I have a Sticko by uh, Bass Pro Shops that's on there as the uh, soft plastic on the end of the jig. We might get that out there.
something's literally crawling right behind me and I don't know what the hell it is, guys. I don't like that. <laughs> it could be a snake, man, for all I know. Or a turtle. But that just creeped me right the hell out. That was a bird. <laughs> Small little bird right behind me in the trees. Little English sparrow. Oh, saw something swipe up on the bait. Bass. Man, he smashed the crap. Oh, my goodness gracious. The only fish we had. I just saw a brief little flash right there. Hopefully, you guys saw that. And there was a little dink that smashed the daylights out of that bait. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Dan. You can't even catch a little one. What's up with you? All right. Time to refocus this here, guys. We are going to go ahead and get to a, a pond here we traveled down to from where we were up north. I'm hoping we can catch some fish here. We're going to get back to... The lunker log again we still have the watermelon red flakes still on there and i drove up on it, it looks kind of cloudy but we'll know once we get around the corner here what kind of clarity we have but we're going to cast that watermelon out there first and if we have to switch we'll do that but again the goal is to get fish on this bait but let's make our magic happen here hopefully we do have crystal clear water so let's get the uh Lunker log back out. Hopefully this fish can see this bait a little bit easier than the last pond we were at. Seeing the minnows up close, that's good. Just stepped in this uh, decaying leaves underneath uh, the water here and the smell coming off it is just uh, <laughs> quite pungent to say the least. Oh, looks like we have a fish on. Yep, fish on. All right, finally, after all that time, guys, we got something on the end of the line. About a pound, it looks like, maybe. We'll see. I felt a nice little slam. All right, skunk is off. And the lunker log has done its job. <laughs> all right, man. Nice, nice hit. There we go. <laughs> Finally, let me get my pliers because he's almost got that in his gullet and I don't want him to swallow it up. All right, so we got the bass free finally. It was just stuck way back on its tongue and everything else. There's no injury to the fish at all. But uh, finally we got a fish after a couple hours and the lunker log is doing its job. Watermelon, red flake comes through. And let's see if we can just add on to that. But I uh, will give uh, this little guy a little quick uh, revival and it's gone slow slow going here <laughs> my goodness all right so this is the first for this pond we're gonna throw that guggen bait sexy shad lipless crankbait clutch series Oh, yes. Look, my crankbait's right there, guys. Um, I pull, pulled up another line, and the bass is on another line. Holy crap, and it's a donkey, too. It's an absolute donkey, guys. Holy crap. My line's already up there, man. We got a hand pull this in, guys. Holy crap. I caught somebody's braid that had a bass on the end of it. Look at this. <laughs> he was already hooked. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> There's my lipless crankbait right there. This was on, it looks like somebody's trying to do a, a, a uh, wacky rig as well. But hopefully we can get the hook out of this fish, man, because he does have it in the gullet. We'll try to be as ginger as possible. This might be a three pounder. I think we're gonna get a weight on this one right here. Here we go, we just saved that fish's life. Look, somebody was using a fluke 
How weird was that? Look at the belly on that fish, man. Holy crap. But look, look here, here's my lipless crankbait. There's the braid and there's the fluke. <laughs> so somebody caught this, probably lost it, and it was sitting out there. But that is definitely one of the weirdest catches I've ever caught. <laughs> Let's get a, a weight on this. So do we count that as a lipless crankbait catch? I don't know. Didn't seem like it. We just got lucky and came across the line. But uh, I'm sure this fish is gonna be very, very happy to be free of that line. Almost a three pounder, 2.82 pounds. Beautiful, beautiful bass. Nice and fat. <laughs> there you go. All right, mama, let's get you back in there, man, so you can uh, go out there and procreate. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you're super happy now. <laughs> and she's gone. What a happy fish. Upon further investigation of this mess that I pulled out of that last fish's face, it looks like the person who really technically caught that fish was throwing a drop shot rig. Uh, obviously we snagged the line and brought the fish in so fate intervened for that large mouth and we'll get to that in a second. But the reason why I'm saying this is a drop shot is one that's a drop shot hook. You would put it through the nose of the fluke just like so. And then right here is the snap swivel, which probably would have been a weight right here, but they had a weight here for whatever reason. So maybe there was another line that got caught up in here, but that's that's definitely a drop shot weight that's right here. So we got two freebies. We got a hook and a drop shot. I don't usually use snap swivels, but we'll throw it in a box because you never know, we may need to use it. And that fluke doesn't look too bad looking. It's, it's a decent color. Could probably use that again. But as I said, fate intervened. We caught that bass, brought it in, and that hook was just in the gullet enough to where I was able to go ahead and get my pliers and gingerly get that out of there. If it would have swallowed the hook, I would have just cut the line and let the fish go. But now that this is out of the gullet, the fish can go ahead and swallow whatever bait it wants to swallow and grow bigger. Hopefully it turns into a big fat green bean bag later on down in life. Right now it's almost three pounds. It could be a 10 pounder a couple years from now, who knows? But. I'm sure that bass is quite thankful that I was snagging it for today and releasing it and getting it on its way and being a happy, more freer fish. <laughs> but uh, let's get this in the car. We'll toss it in the trash later on and uh, we'll get back to fishing for a couple more minutes. All right, I want a private, private, private pond right here. The homeowners. I know we're not going to have any problems with me being here at all as long as I'm on their side of the property and not on anybody else's that's surrounding the uh, area here in this community. Uh, I tried uh, calling them, they didn't answer. I tried dropping a text, but I'm sure she's going to get back to me and say everything's okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, take that gamble. But uh, I've worked with this young lady, I just saw fish just bopping off the side here already. But I've worked with this young lady for a very, very long time. And uh, her husband said, hey, anytime you want, come over here. There's some fish here. He doesn't know how big they are, but we're going to try to catch them. But that's a good sign if I'm seeing fish dashing right off the side here and watching frogs all over the place. But we'll get that uh, lunker log back out there. We're going to play the shoreline since I saw that fish dash right off here on my uh, right-hand side. But we don't know if this is a, a dink pond, a medium sized pond, or a big fat green bean bag pond. Who knows? Let's figure it out. Look at that, guys. Fish are jumping up over there, man. I gotta move my way over there. That was a decent sized fish that jumped out of the water there. Right on that point. We're gonna stay a distance away so we don't spook that fish off, but they're definitely chasing bait on here. It's a nice little drop off over here too. We got a hit, we got a hit. Fish on, fish on. All right, it's a decent one, guys. It's a decent one, too. Nice. There you go. All right. 
<laughs> All right. That, thank you. That was that fish that was jumping right over here. He took my worm and all, guys. Look at that, that hook just barely came out of its mouth. <laughs> nice looking colors for our community pond, not too bad. But I felt like a tiny little tug in it. Off she went off the right hand side to the middle. But uh, let's get another uh, lunker log on there. Crazy how one pond doesn't produce and another one does. Weird how that works, right? All right, let me go over the shoreline right here. Let me cast along that edge. I'm curious enough to go ahead and pull out the uh, lipless crankbait and fish in here since it seems like there's some decent depth in here. All right, let's throw it back out there. I kind of figured there'd be something sitting by those rocks over there by that pipe. See if I'll go after it again. Pretty sure it was a small one. Oh, right up on it again. Looks like the fish is moving. Got him that time. Got him that time. Oh, whoa, 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 ho, 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 ho. There is the big fat green bean bag we were looking for, guys. There's the big fat green bean bag. Yes. Oh my God, that's an absolute gorgeous looking bass, guys. Wow, 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 wow. Looks like a three pounder. Look at this beautiful bass, guys right by those pipes, possibly three. Look at the gorgeous colors on this fish. Light green tinge on it, isn't that crazy looking? All righty. <laughs> the lunker log is coming alive, guys. It's coming alive. All right, nice little gut on it again, filling up with the minnows. It didn't feel like anything until it started going off to the left-hand side and it wanted to get the heck away. But that bass is almost two and a half pounds, 2.35 pounds. But what a pretty, pretty bass. Let's get down on the edge and uh, get this one on its way. Try to keep fishing for more. We finally got a lively pond. Look at all those minnows, man. No wonder that bass is up here doing its thing. All right, mama. She's gone. All right, let's get it back out there. Let's see if there's another one by that pipe. But as soon as it dropped in the water, both times, man, that fish immediately hit that bait. Look, there's another one on there. Another one, another one, another one. All right, little one. All right. Wow, they're all over those rocks. What do we got here? Another bass. <laughs> those boys better get over here, man. <laughs> I might catch all the fish. <laughs> All right. All loaded up here by that uh, drain over there. She's gone. You gotta figure, probably not a lot of people have been fishing on this pond, and again, there's no pressure on it, so anything that just drops right in their face, they're probably gonna eat. Those are the kind of ponds I like. Right in front of that tube again. Oh, there you go. There you go, another one. There is a whole bunch of them over there. Oh, whole bunch of them. All right. That's a jumper, man. <laughs> Got that one on a good spot right there. Look at those bellies, guys. <laughs> It's crazy. There must be uh, something feeding right into that pipe right there, and that's probably where those minnows are hanging. Uh, we're caught on the rocks. We're going to blow our spot here. There we go, we're out, we're free. Thank Jesus. Look, there's another one, man. They are savage today. Straight savage. Oh, that's a good one, that's a good one. 
that's a good one guys that's definitely a good one man oh man he's zipping along there can you see him right there barely under the water he is zipping along right at me he's loosening me up all right another decent one here you go look at this <laughs> wow wow come on boy yes all of these are beautiful hook sets nice what some these are some great looking fish in this pond belly belly <laughs> there you go man that feet that thing is stocky as heck but it's got some weight on it man i mean it looks like maybe a pound and a half but i bet you this thing's a little bit over two pounds let's just go ahead and give this one a measurement uh, not too bad two pounds nine ounces let's keep them coming where's that five pounder at pretty pretty nice looking colors on these fish she's gone that bait's getting straight savaged <laughs> how many bass do you think i caught maybe i don't know good eight bass so far and that thing's getting mangled up all right one more worm and uh we'll make the uh magic happen and have finalize our day here all right last cast or two we're gonna cast the right dead center right here above the pipe try to bring one more in Oh, there we go guys there we go good way to finish it out man i fish slammed the daylights out of that bait all right <laughs> all right <laughs> there you go man got a nice bass all salad but i will get that out of the fish's mouth show her off and bid her adieu all right she's gone i am beyond exhausted i hope you appreciated that episode i put 120 percent of my effort into three ponds and finally on that last one it just got chaotic and this fish just absolutely exploded on those lunker logs guys by guga baits they finally came through after all of that effort man my god I went to my two tried and trues, one in the kidney pond, two is the other one we always top water on, and I thought we were gonna get fish left and right, but that those ponds weren't having it. I just got that one miss there at the beginning, and then that weird catch that we had uh, with the, the drop shot rig that was stuck in the fish. We just got snagged on the line, but thankfully that bass got released to live another day. And of course, we gotta give the honorable mention to the watermelon flake uh, lunker log, because that one caught one bass on that second pond we were on but the winner of it all the black blue flake that one savaged the fish on that last pond we were in the general area of that second pond to the last one that you saw right there so sarah i tried to text you i tried to call you you didn't answer so i was fishing on your property i'm sorry but i know you would have let me on there but here is the result of me coming on your pond finally and catching some absolutely beautiful looking fish man they were killing that lunker log right there by that pipe there i mean they were just gathered up they must have been beating up and ambushing those minnows coming in and out of that pipe there again another one almost three pounds uh again the heaviest one was the one from the second pond but still both the same in size every one of those fish have big fat full bellies uh that we were catching them with the exception of one but we went on to that point two to the left of her house, got another decent one right there, man. So I was absolutely thrilled when that pond just lit up and finally made this day well worth all of the effort that I put forth out there for you guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching that episode. Uh, I hope I have no more like that again because uh, that wore me out pretty, pretty good today. So as always guys, like, subscribe, push that notification bell. Give me a big fat thumbs up if you like any of the videos. Of course, drop a comment below. I'm hoping you guys have a great weekend. Hopefully you're catching your big fat green bean bags. And as always, fish on.